Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, and for those of you who were on um, our tennis calls in the past, I said that we were going to have an Olympic size surprise uh, potentially in the next few weeks. And so I'm so excited that um, we can do this. So I'm going to ask that everybody, because we have so many athletes here with us tonight, um, I'm going to ask that everybody stays on mute um, so that we can hear all of the great questions and responses that we're going to have. Um, and then towards the end, we will have some time for questions. Um, so people can start thinking about those now and you can type them into the chat. Or um, what we'll do is we'll one at a time, I think we'll be able to, to take some uh, questions uh, in person off of mute. So first we're gonna have, uh, we're joined by uh, Special Olympics Nebraska. So excited to have him with us tonight. Um, so why, why don't you introduce yourself to everybody? Um, and then we'll let you introduce our special guest, okay? Hi, I'm Wyatt Spaulding. Um, I live in Nebraska, a town called Fremont, Nebraska. Um, I'm a special week tennis player. Um, I've gotten lucky enough to play in some pretty big tennis tournaments, but uh, I'm just really honored to be able to interview Gabby. So let's get started. So thanks, Gabby, for uh, being here with us today. She muted. Oh, there she is. Thanks, Gabby, Hi. for being. Thanks for being here thanks with us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So first off, I just want to say uh, congratulations on getting invited to the Olympics. That uh, it's a big honor. I mean, that's cool that you say you played in the Olympics. So. Thank you so much. Yeah. So first question I have for you is, when you heard you were going to be in the Olympics, what did it feel like for you to get that call that you were going to be able to be part of Team Canada? I was really, really excited. Um, it's, it's, it's a little different with tennis than it is for other sports because other sports probably have a few years of lead up into the Olympics and the Olympics are like the culmination of all of their hard work and effort. And in tennis, we have tournaments that go all year round. But for me, the Olympics have always been number one and like the most important thing to qualify for and to compete in. So when I got the call, this was probably in June, um, I wasn't uh, surprised because I knew who my doubles partner was going to be and I knew we would get in together and we would qualify together. Um, but I, I was just thrilled to be selected by my country. Uh, and uh, so I think it was just one of those moments of like, yes, I did it. <laughs> nice. So did you grow up like watching the Olympics as a kid? Nice. Yes, I did. Um, all the time. I watched all the sports. Uh, track was probably my favorite. Uh, just there's so many different disciplines in track. So uh, it's really, really interesting, especially multi-sport athletes that compete in different in different um, disciplines. I always thought that was really, really cool because it meant that they had, you know, a really big skill set of what they could do. Yeah, for sure. I, I know the track. And tennis is probably one of my two favorites to watch. And which is funny because I don't, I never watch track unless the Olympics are on. It's like, you just get into it. And it's like, yeah, when you think of track, you think of, oh, the Olympics. <laughs> so. Um, totally. So like, is it hard? Was it hard to like, you played Wimbledon and now you have to turn around and go play the Olympics where at some sports, it's like their sports been over for a couple months. So they're preparing for the Olympics where you, you just played in this big tournament. Now you're going to go play in a bigger one in the Olympics. So was that kind of difficult or were you kind of prepared for that? It was, it is a tricky transition with tennis. As I mentioned, we have tournaments all year long. So the, the training time in between them can be very, very short. And so the lead up into the Olympics, really for me, it was Wimbledon was over and I had about a week and then I had to fly to Tokyo. So it was, um, it was a pretty quick turnaround for sure. And for me though, it was also a time to reset uh, mentally and physically. So I took a bit of a break away from tennis. Um, I still kept up my fitness, but I, uh, I, I needed Hi, that little bit of a pause. Hi. 
Hi, Gabby. How are you doing today? That's okay. Hey guys. I'm great. How are hey, you? Conrad and Bijan, remember, we're going to stay Hi, on Joe. mute. Okay? Hey, Bijan, <laughs> remember, we're staying on mute tonight. No wow, so you only had like a week in between, you said? That's crazy. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so is this your first Olympics or have you played in the one before uh, this one too? I played in the one before this one. Um, I played in Rio in 2016 oh, cool. and that was my first one. And I partnered up with another Canadian girl for doubles. Uh, her name was Jeannie Bouchard. And uh, so she still plays for Canada, but she's a little bit injured right now. And so she couldn't come, but uh yeah, so we did that, and that was really, really fun. Um, I think my favorite part was just getting to meet all the other athletes. It was not my first games, though, because I played Pan Am Games in 2015 and in 2011. Uh, the 2015 ones were in Toronto and Canada. The 2011 ones were in Guadalajara uh, in Mexico. Wow. And so I'm used to playing in games, and, and I'm used to seeing other athletes from other countries. But, of course, the Olympics has athletes from countries you've never even heard of before and so it's a really really cool uh, way to learn uh, stories of other athletes and how they got to where they were going and and all the sacrifices that they made um, to get to the Olympics. Oh I bet that would be so cool to meet different people from other countries and learn their stories. Yeah. I mean, wow that, that, that's a great experience. Definitely. So like being at the Olympics, do you have, what do you like more, the opening ceremonies or the closing ceremonies? I think the opening ceremonies. Um, in the last Olympics, we were not able to attend the closing ceremonies because of course we had a tournament the following week. So as soon as we were out of the tournament, we had to go to the next one. Um, but I, I think the opening ceremonies, just because it's like, all this pent up energy everyone is so excited to to get things going and um to to have an official celebration uh, where everyone's coming together and watching all the countries walk out and seeing what um entertainment uh the the host nation has created for everyone so uh I, i'm very much looking to to the opening ceremonies which are for us they're tomorrow evening I'm not sure what time that might be back home, maybe tomorrow morning, like Friday morning and over here is Friday evening. So we have a whole schedule tomorrow about when we leave the village, um, when we get there, what do we do, um, how long we have to wait, uh, what we have to wear, everybody wears the same thing. <laughs> so it's a whole process. <laughs> yeah, I, I think opening ceremonies are pretty cool because I mean, when, we went, when I went to USA Games, it was like this huge thing for opening and then closing was just like a party, but I just feel like opening in the Olympics or other USA games, they always do it big and it's just really cool to see. So. Yep, absolutely. So you said the Olympics is like kind of the tournament you would want to you know, play at the most. And it was a huge deal to getting invited. So would you say winning a gold medal at the Olympics is a bigger deal to you than winning any of the four majors? Like, is that like your ultimate dream above the four majors to win a gold medal? For me, yes. Uh, some other tennis players might not feel the same, but for me growing up valuing the Olympics as much as I did, uh, especially having um, Polish heritage, I'm half Polish, my father's Polish and he came to Canada about 40 years ago. And so the Olympics in Poland are, are really, uh, you just uh, live and breathe the Olympics and you live and breathe sports. And um, sports are so highly valued in that country. Uh, and so I grew up with, with the idea that the Olympics were the be all and end all for an athlete and that you should strive to, to make it to the Olympics if, if you want um, to reach like the highest echelon in your sport. So definitely for me, winning a gold medal I don't, I can't, I can't even imagine how I would feel. I, I probably would just <laughs> fall on the floor and <laughs> not oh, even yeah. believe that it had happened. <laughs> I would think it'd be a big deal because it's like it's a team thing and you're playing for your country. And so is it 
probably a different feeling playing for your country in the Olympics than like tennis. You're, <clears throat> excuse me, you're always playing for your country, but it's like, you know, do you, it, it, it just feel that feeling when you walk out on the court, like just, it's just bigger to you than just going to Wimbledon and playing for your country. Yeah. Cause normally we, yes, like you said, we do represent our country. I, I play for Canada. I grew up in Canada. Um, and it is great to do that regularly, but the Olympics, it's, I almost feel like it's even bigger than Canada because it's like the whole world. So I feel like the Olympics are bigger than us as individuals. They're bigger than us as a nation. They're, they, sport brings the world together. And so that's the part that I love about the Olympics the most is that really you're playing for something that's way bigger than yourself that's way bigger than even your own country as much of an honor as it is to represent Canada I feel like playing in the Olympics is hopefully it inspires you know if I have a good performance hopefully I'm inspiring more than just Canadians you know like like you guys I'm talking to the Maryland chapter and other Special Olympics athletes probably from around the U.S. and so this is what I love about sport and how it brings people from other places together. Nice yeah like so like your mindset, do you kind of do like the same routine to like stay calm and focus on the match? Because like, yeah. like for me, I'm going to the USA Games for basketball next summer, but it's like a big Amazing. deal representing your, yeah, thanks. So it's a big deal representing your state or your country. So it's like, do you try to take that same mindset? Like it's just like you're playing at Wimbledon or the US Open when you step on the court at the Olympics? Yep. No, for sure. Uh, it can be a little bit overwhelming. Uh, I think the difference here, it'll be a little strange because we have no fans at all. So it'll be quite quiet. <laughs> um, so in that sense, you know, maybe you don't have the same kind of energy as you would have stepping on the court as you normally would. But um, definitely, have to, I would keep the same routines as I normally was, you know, visualization, breathing exercises, meditation, taking some quiet time to myself to try to get in the zone. It's all the same things that I, I don't think when you come to a bigger event, you should necessarily change your routine. Uh, I think it should be the same because I think if you change your routine, you almost put in your mind, label the event as something bigger and more important. And that actually puts more pressure on yourself to perform. And you don't want that. You want it to be the same every single day. And at the end, you're hoping that the result is good, but you really don't have any control over that result. So you just do the best that you can. Well, yeah, I bet for sure. Like you want to just stay calm no matter what tournament you're playing in. Um, exactly. So, um, so like when you got there, is it hard to adjust to the time zone? It's like four, 14 hours or I know from where I'm at, it's like 14 hours, but you know, the time zone is super different. So, does that mess up your sleep at all or anything like that? Yep, I definitely am suffering from a little bit of jet lag. Okay. But I was in London, England before this. And um, I'm not sure the time difference to London, but the flight was 11 hours. Oh, wow. The time difference. Uh, actually, I'll check quickly the time difference. So right okay. now in London, it is, I think it's about midnight. And so... So right now over here, we're eight, just past 8 a.m. And uh, so it's about eight hours different with London. Uh, okay. So that's, you know, that's a pretty significant difference. They say that jet lag can take the amount of hours difference is the amount of days it will take for your body to reset. So maybe in eight days, my body will completely reset to normal, uh, normal sleep rhythms and stuff like that. But for sure, these first few days, you know, I've been waking up in the middle of the night, tossing and turning, <laughs> you know, oh. um, it's sometimes hard to get back to sleep. But that's why we come here, you know, six days in advance of competing. That way we have a lot of time to adjust and we make sure that we're ready for when we're competing. Oh, cool. Yeah, I would think like just getting used to all the time zones, especially being a tennis player, you really have to get used to it. So. Definitely. Yep. So, um, are you playing singles also or just um, doubles? No, I'm just playing women's doubles and mixed doubles. So, in women's doubles, my partner is Sharon Fitchman, 
And in mixed doubles, my partner is Felix Oje Aliasim. Are you playing with Ali Asim? I remember watching him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really, I'm a big fan of his. So. Um, oh, awesome. Yeah. So have you played with either of those before? Or this is going to be your first uh, time playing with them? This will be the first time playing with Felix. And it actually will be Felix's first time playing mixed doubles. He's never played mixed doubles before. So that will be fun. Huh. Um, and in women's doubles with Sharon Fitchman, we played a long time ago because uh, we're around the same age. And so we grew up playing tennis in Canada and played a lot of the same tournaments. And then when we were in our late teens, early 20s, mid 20s, we partnered up several times. So it'll be good to get back out there with her. Nice. That's yeah. awesome. Um, so just like kind of being there in Japan, what is uh, like the most interesting thing or like thing you ate there that was really good? And is there something you ate there that was like, oh, I don't know about this? <laughs> good question. <laughs> um, well, the food is really good. Uh, good. Japan is known for really good food. And so we're, we're very lucky in that sense. Um, the weirdest thing I've eaten, well, yesterday in the vegetarian and gluten-free section, they had this chocolate muffin type thing um and they called it like a velvet muffin so i was curious and i had some and it was had this very gummy texture um but it was amazing and because it was gluten-free i didn't feel too bad eating it <laughs> um, nice. but uh <laughs> but um that's probably the weirdest thing i've had so far and i didn't expect the texture to be gummy mm. um and then the best thing i've had ooh. Well, they have really good sushi, obviously, um, but they have really good noodles. So like ramen or pho. I don't know if you guys have ramen noodles. I think those are really yummy. Um, yeah, so so we, we have so many different options. They have pizza, pasta, vegetarian, vegan, halal, all different fruits and salads and ice cream. Um, and yeah, so so we have lots of options to choose from, which is which is a lot of fun actually, because you're never well, bored. Awesome. Oh, I bet that's awesome. So, like you, you said before, there's no fans. So, like, are you kind of used to that? Because you know, before there were no fans, but then you just played in Wimbledon, and there were fans. Like, so I mean, is it kind of be weird without fans again, or because like you had to play? last season without them yeah. I'm just kind of used to it yeah it's I, I'm okay with it um it's obviously much nicer when you have fans even if they're just a few of them you know I, I remember playing a, a singles tournament in China uh, I think three years ago and there was one man watching my match but he knew who I was and he always asked for a photo and he was so nice and supportive and was cheering me on so even that one man really made a difference in my matches um and I ended up winning three matches and qualifying and making the main draw and nice. so I just think that even one fan cheering you on can make a big difference and so um yeah so here having no fans that that'll be a little bit sad but it is what it is and you know we're we're a doubles team so we cheer each other on you know we encourage each other which is really nice we don't have to be out there by ourselves and and we have um, a little team around us as well. We have a coach. Um, we have a team manager who organizes all the things that we need to do. Um, we have a physiotherapist and a massage therapist. So I expect them to be at the matches. And so at least there'll be a few people that are on our side. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that made a good point. Like playing doubles, at least you have your partner to cheer you up and get you pumped. Or singles, it's like, well, it's just me, exactly. I guess. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's what I love about doubles is having that support person there. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, oh, I, I skipped over this one, but do you do, so at the USA Games, you know, we like trade pins and stuff. And I heard you guys do it at the Olympics. Do you like trading pins? Yeah. So I just started um, yesterday. Germany. Oh, no. This one, nice. I have one oh, pin cool. from Trinidad and Tobago. This one, 
And then I have another pin from Cabo Verde. Nice. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm definitely going to get more into the pin trading. Uh, yesterday, I only brought a few with me, which I could only trade a few. <laughs> um, and uh, it's really fun because it's actually a nice way to meet people um, and ask where they're from and what sport they play and wish them luck. So. Uh, yeah, I, I do like the the pin the pin trading uh, the pin exchange uh, system that we've so, got here. It's really fun. Oh yeah, it's I I wouldn't say I'm the biggest pin trading fan. My coach kind of made me do it, but then I, I I played a joke on her and put them all on my back. <laughs> Told her I traded them to freak her out. But yeah, I would think that's but a you really didn't. good way. <laughs> no, I I almost got away with it too, but my brother started laughing. So. <laughs> But um, <laughs> so I, so um, meeting people through pen training and just you've been to the Olympics before. Is there anybody that you're excited to see again, you compete in a different sport, or do you have a lot of other friends in other sports, either on your Canadian team or on a different team that you like to go watch? Um, well, here we're actually not allowed to go watch other other sports, which is really disappointing. So I hope they change that rule soon, but oh, I don't yeah. think they will. So I can't watch them physically, but I can still watch them on TV. Um, but in Rio, I met a few divers and I met uh, some of the men's uh, volleyball team from Canada. So nice. if I have a chance to see them play, I'll definitely, definitely try to catch that. And uh, actually, interestingly enough, a funny story. So in 2009, I played in an event uh, called the Canada Games, which was um, basically a junior athletes in Canada. And we had our own little Canada Olympics um, in Prince Edward Island, which is the province all the way to the east of Canada. And I met, I roomed with a girl there. And we hadn't seen each other since then. So it's been 11 years, but we've been following each other on social media. And I saw that she had qualified for the Olympics about a month ago. And I was so happy for her because that was like her whole goal as a diver to, to make the Olympics. And I saw on her social media, she was very open with her results and how sometimes she was disappointed with what had happened and other times very proud of her performance. And so she made it here and we, we crossed paths the other day. We gave each other a big hug and, just congratulated each other for making it this far and so I uh yeah I was so proud of her and just knowing her you know from 11 years ago like oh it was a I don't know how old she was I was about 17 at the time so you know just a teenager with a dream turned into uh turned into an adult that had realized that dream so it's, it's really really cool to see something like that happen oh yeah that's a great story oh man that would be so cool to just you know, know people that are going for the same dream you are, and then you both accomplish. Yeah, this. exactly. Yeah. Um, so you said earlier you really like track. Would if you could compete in any other event, would you compete in track? Hmm. <laughs> well. I definitely would not do long distance running. I can tell you that. <laughs> um, if it's any kind of running, it's going to be 100 meters. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> no longer than that. Quick sprint and it's over. <laughs> Is there any other events you would like um, to um, I always thought long jump was really cool. I always yeah. thought pole vaulting was really, really cool. Very different and unique. Um, I thought javelin was cool. Shot put, although you have to be really, really strong for shot put. Um, the, honestly, any of them, it would be it would be so cool to compete in. But probably my favorite would be long jump, uh, the hundred meter sprint, uh, and maybe a few others I can't think of off the top of my head. Um, besides track, is there another sport that you all would watch? Be like, that would be pretty cool to compete in at the Olympics. Um. Actually, you know, cool to do like downhill skiing. Ooh, that would be cool. Oh, froze. Oh, I lost her for a second. Where'd she go? Do you mind? Um, 
Um, yeah. Oh, you know what else? I really like beach volleyball. Oh yes, that would be cool. That's fun yeah, to watch. Yeah, actually, my two of my roommates um, in the apartment that we all share in the village, uh, two of them are Canadian beach volleyball players. So nice. um, I'll have to try to, you know, pick their brain a little bit, and uh, if I see them on TV, cheer them on. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that, that would be pretty cool. They're they're super athletic. So. Yeah. Very. Um, so I guess um, you can't this year. You can't go see watch the other sports, but like go back to like your last Olympics. What did you do when you weren't competing? You were watching other sports, or is there any other fun things you do when you're not competing in your sport? Yep. Uh, so last year, oh, sorry, last Olympics in 2016, we, um, Jeannie and I, we went to go watch swimming uh, because that stadium was right next to the tennis stadium. So we got to see Michael Phelps swim and that was really, really cool. And um, we cheered on the Canadians that were in the races. We had a really, uh, we had a great one there. Her name was Penny Oleshiak and I think she got a medal, um, maybe even a gold medal in swimming. So uh, that was really fun to watch. And obviously seeing Michael Phelps, you know, one of the biggest legends in swimming ever yeah. was, was really interesting. Um, and that was definitely a highlight of the trip. And uh, what else did we watch? Um, we watched a lot on TV. Anything that was on TV, we were watching uh, gymnastics. Um, we have one girl that got the gold medal in gymnastics from Canada in uh, trampolining in 2016, I believe. And, and, uh, so it was fun to watch her compete. Um, and, uh, who else? Yeah. I think those are the main ones that I remember. Okay. Besides um, watching this. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, that's all right. Okay. So besides watching the sports, did you go like and adventure throughout like the town or where you were at and do other fun things? Uh, at the time, we didn't really venture out too much because we were just so busy. Even when we were inside right. the village, we would go to the game room. We would go to the cafeteria. We would hang out with other athletes, ones that we just met, um, other ones that we hadn't met yet. Uh, it was so much fun to just get to know them. Um, and then, of course, other tennis players that we knew through being on the tennis tour. So we were always really busy doing stuff. So we actually didn't have any time to, to venture out. But I do know some people who did venture out like to the beaches and they went surfing and they were avid surfers anyway. So they wanted to do that. But you, you could go out and about if you wanted to. But we were just so busy with the village activities that, that we stayed in the village. So it was actually pretty fun. Oh, nice. Yeah. So... Um, when I went to USA game 2018, you know, they gave you all this cool gear. So I know you guys get cool gear. What's like the, your favorite thing that they gave you for team Canada? Oh yeah. Um, well, we got like some, some shirts like this one. Um, we obviously got our pins. Nice. We got these masks, which have the Canada maple leaf with the, with the Olympic rings. Yeah. Um, we got like other clothes and shoes. Uh, what else did we get? We got some hats, which are really nice. We got a bucket hat. I don't know if you guys know, but bucket hats are all the rage. <laughs> um, so we got a bucket hat. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, we got some cool socks with the maple leaf on them. Um, we got some sliders, you know, those sandals that a lot of the athletes wear. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like all of it. I think they're all really cool things to have. Um, uh, you know, that's Olympics themed and Canadian themed. So, yeah, I, I think I'll cherish all of it, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's awesome. So when the Olympics starts to end and, um, you know, your matches are all done, how are you going to prepare to going, you go to Wimbledon, then you go to the Olympics, but it's not like a lot of other sports. You got to go prepare to play in the U.S. Open. So what's That's your right. game plan kind of for that? Are you going to take a little break after the Olympics or go right into training? Uh, you know what? We actually have 
uh, three major lead up tournaments to the US Open. Uh, one is in San Jose, California. Another one is in Montreal, Canada. And then another one is in Cincinnati, Ohio. So I'm actually scheduled to play all three of those. And so I'm going to do that. And so just competing and training at the same time. And then the week before the US Open, I'm not sure what I'll do yet. We have some other tournaments available to play on the schedule if I wanted to, but it might be a little bit too, too many tournaments in a row. So I might take that week off a little bit, use it as a small training block, um, depending how my results have gone. So it's, uh, yeah, it's still a very busy time and uh, don't have a lot of time off. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, um, that's all my questions I have for you. Um, you know, good luck. Thanks, Wyatt. Thank you. And room for you. And so I'll try to see if I can find you on the Olympic Channel or I think NBC carries tennis. So, yeah, I'll definitely cool. keep an eye on how you're doing. So, thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for doing this. Oh, pleasure. So much fun. Wyatt, great job. And I see some people have started raising their hands. So Gabby, maybe while we have some people think of questions, can we, yep. Ann and I were very lucky that we got kind of like a micro tour of the Olympic Village as you were walking through, but. Oh yes, let's like have a, a tour. Maybe show us around what the Olympic Village looks like. Sure. Let's do it. Okay. Well, behind me, we have the race. And we have usually lots of people waiting to take photos with the rink. Um, <laughs> um, and then if I, hopefully you can see the buildings. Yeah. Uh, so like here we have the Australia building um, over over there we have Canada but we don't have too many Canadian flags so you can't tell I'm actually a little disappointed about that I wish we had more flags <laughs> on our building to show that we're we have like 300 athletes here so we should have them actually I might flip the camera around I'm not sure how to do that um oh there oh there we go that's better so yeah say that again I wasting seeing anything hangs Wait, my hand. I'm my. I'm mine. Yeah. We're gonna get to questions in a second, okay? Cool. So this is kind of uh, the main road, and you have everyone's all countries flags here down the side, which is really really cool. Uh, I'm not sure how many buildings there are, but I think there are at least 19 buildings that look like this, that are hosting all of the nations. You have the, you know, people and uh, actually right now the temperature is great, but as the day goes on, it gets really, really hot here. It's been like 90 with humidity. So I've been struggling a little bit with that, <laughs> especially coming from England where than somewhere in the 70s um, but here's the Australia building and they're very uh, bright and colorful and uh, they're super proud of their athletes and I think it really shows because they do so much for their athletes even in their building they have a little coffee shop <laughs> for them um, which is really really cool and I just love how they've decorated their building with all of the flags and their national colors of gold and green. So it's really cool. That's great. But as I'm walking, um, I could probably take a few questions. Argentina okay. building. That's Argentina and Italy. Argentina and Italy. All right. So thanks everybody for putting your hands up. I'm going to go through uh, some of them, but also um, if you want to type your questions, um, and maybe we can work with Ann and Gabby, if you type a question, we might be able to do, get an email out later. But let's go to Mr. Livingston. I saw your hand up first. 
Um, so if you want to go ahead and unmute and ask your I'm question. Gonna, um, lower my hand first. Hi, Gabby. First things first, I want to thank you for coming. Pleasure. Um, my quick question is for you. What's been like your favorite experience besides actually being there in for the Olympics in Tokyo? Like what's like been your favorite part so far? Um, honestly, my favorite part was probably the first day going into the, into the main dining hall, <laughs> just because I, I get excited by food. And so when they had so many different food options, um, and like, it's just a huge space, I'll take you through it in a minute. I might be a little bit loud, uh, so bear with me, but um, it's just really, really cool because they have so many options. And then obviously as an athlete, as you guys know, it's so important to us to fuel our bodies um, to perform that we can. And so I was really excited by the <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> Thanks. Oh. Can you still hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay, sorry if I cut out a little bit, no, but basically the food is my favorite part. <laughs> very good. All right, thanks, Sam. That was a great question. Let's go to David Godoy. Do you want to unmute yourself? Yes. Uh, thank you so much for coming uh, to for this. So meeting today, I I just want to say um, congratulations on representing Canada, and uh, I wish the good luck. Thank you so much, David. And also, one last question would be: uh, Have you been trying to learn uh, Spanish language? Um. You know what? No, I haven't. Not too much. I know just a little bit, just un poquito <laughs> de español. Um, but actually, I'm going to be teaching those for the rest of the year. Her name is Luisa Stefani. So I hope she's going to teach me some of these. Um, yeah, so. I will be learning a little Portuguese within the next few months. That's great. All right, Thank David. You. Thank you, Gabby. You're welcome. Thanks, David. All right. And Caroline O'Hara, you have your real hand up. So why don't you go ahead and unmute and ask your question? Look, I have my own Canada shirt. Want to see, Jack? I love that. Yeah. Hold on, let me, Caroline, do it again and I'll spotlight you so everybody can see it. Yeah, spotlight me, please. Okay. <laughs> that looks great. Yeah. Canada and the USA. That's great. Good luck, Gabby. One difference matches. Can you hear me, Gabby? Oh. Mm -hmm. Right, Jeff? Oh. Uh, hey, we lost her and uh, Jack. I think Gabby's having some technical difficulties. Yes, technical difficulties. Hi, everybody. Hey, Adam. Hi, Adam. Adam, please mute yourself, please. What's going on, Jeff? I think I think we're having difficult. I think we're having some technical difficulties in Tokyo, but that's okay. Um, we'll just see. Hello, is it working? Oh, it's fine. How about that? Check that out. <sighs> Yeah, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Can you? When's your first can you ask your yeah. question again? Caroline, do you want to try again and ask your for question? my matches? Yeah, when's your match? Your first match? Oh, um, I don't know yet. I find out later. So okay. on the weekend. Yeah. I I'll watch it. 
Yeah. Thank you. I'll take home, Gary. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Good luck. Thank you much. Yeah, Caroline, great, great question. We will all be watching, Gabby. All right. Thank you. Have next? Let's head to uh, Derek Camberg. Do you want to unmute yourself and ask your question? Hi, Gabby. Um, I just wanted to thank you for coming and congratulations on making Team Canada. And thank my you. question is, what are you most looking forward to in the Olympics? I am most looking forward to the opening ceremonies tomorrow. Yeah, I'm so excited. That's really cool. Derek, great question. All right, let's head to um, Monique. Do you want to unmute yourself? Uh, did you say me, Jeff? I did say Monique Matthews. Go ahead and ask your question. Okay, so it's nice to meet you. Um, so what would be your most memorable event or your most memorable win? And what is your most memorable defeat? Oh. in your matches. I'm sorry, can you say that again, please? My most memorable win? Yeah. yeah. Your most memorable win and your um and your most memorable defeat from beating someone. Ah, uh, my most memorable win. Ooh, that's a really good question. <laughs> Um, wow. Mm, you know what? I think it was when I won mixed doubles in Australia in 2018. I played with Matej Pavic, who's actually currently the number one men's doubles player in the world. He's from Croatia. He just won Wimbledon doubles just uh, 10 days ago. And um, so I think my most memorable win was, yeah, 20, 2018 Australian Open mixed doubles. That was so much fun. Monique, that was a great question. Thanks for asking that one. Yep, you're welcome. And let's... Should I quickly um, also take the camera around the cafeteria? You can yeah, keep I asking that... questions, but I'm going to turn the camera so you, you all can see. Perfect. Yeah, that sounds great. All right. So let me see here. There are two levels. This is level one, and but we have the same thing on level two. So we're heading up to level two. Cool. Sorry, I'll just put the camera down for now. <laughs> but I can take a question in the meantime. All right, we had, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, we have, we had some questions type in. I guess, so, Jeff. It, go ahead, Bijan. Do you want to ask your question? Yes, question. Congratulations, tennis. Uh, good luck and, and congratulations, Gabby. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bijan, that was great. Um, we had someone, Someone wanted to know if you, this goes back to pin trading. Gabby, you can tell pin trading is very popular at Special Olympics events, yes, but um, do, you have a, do you have a secret to trading pins, the best way to do it? Any, any tips from a pro? No. You know what? I don't have any tips except go up to the one and ask them. And... Uh, and that's it. <laughs> just, uh, hey, Jeff, just be brave you. and ask. That's it. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's a little bit strange to go up to someone you don't know, but you know what? With pin trading, there are no rules. So just go up to anyone you want if they've got a pin that you want. <laughs> there you go. Great way to do it. Great way to meet people. Yes, really great way to meet people. Jeff, can I go? Sure, Conrad. Do you want to ask your question? Um, 
Gabby, congratulations on your Tokyo. Thank you. Um, 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 uh, what year do you do you win on a Special Olympic? The Special Olympic, Olymp regular Olympic, son, sir. Gabby? Ah, uh, sorry. You can you repeat that, please? Sorry, you just cut out a little bit. Um, what is your favorite color? Oh, my favorite color is green, like the trees, what? like a forest green, like a dark green. What is your favorite sport? My favorite sport. Well, do I have to say tennis <laughs> or outside of tennis? <laughs> um, I really like volleyball. I think volleyball is a lot of fun. I have a question. Um, yeah. And uh, what year do you win on the swimming? Uh, 2016. Yeah, 2016 in Rio de Janeiro Olympics. Oh, I see. Yeah. Cool. Conrad, great question. I have a Thank question, you. Jeff. I have one. All right, let's go to uh, Jerry. You're going to be the last question for tonight because Gabby has a busy day of getting ready for competition. So we'll go to Jerry. And if anybody didn't get to ask their question, go ahead and type it in the chat. Um, and I'll make sure that um, okay. Ann and Gabby get to see them and maybe we can get some answers to those. Okay, so Gary, go ahead. Oh, Gabby. How do, hello, Gabby. Thank, congratulations for being hello. chosen for the Olympics. How does it feel to be chosen playing in the Olympics? And, and what is your favorite part of the Olympics? What do you enjoy most? Um, thank you so much. Uh, it's, all of it is, is pretty excellent. Um, I just think being here with all the other athletes here because everyone sacrificed something important to push themselves to their limits in their sport. And so I think I'm just really be around all of them and to compete alongside them and meet some of them. And, um, yeah, so I think for me, it's just more about enjoying that aspect of it and knowing that other people have you know, really put in the hard work. Uh, and, um, and I really, I really admire that in other people. And so I think that's probably one of the best things so far about being here. Okay, and how does it feel to be part of the Olympics? Yeah, it feels amazing. You, you know, you wake up and you have a purpose. You have a really big purpose of, of representing not just ourselves and our country, but representing our sport. Um, and hopefully, you know, other athletes getting to know us and us getting to know them. And um, it's really cool. I, I just, I, I'm so excited every day that I walk around and I see so many athletes from all over the world. It's, it's truly amazing. All right, good luck. Thank you. All right, Gabby. Well, thank you so much for spending some of your morning uh, an hour evening uh, with Special Olympics. We so appreciate um, you taking the time to do this uh, for our athletes. Um, it's always such a pleasure to have you. So thanks so much for doing this. Uh, best of luck in Tokyo. We will be cheering Thank for you. you. We'll be cheering loudly Thank from you. all over the U.S. Uh, when you're playing your matches. So uh, have, have a great tournament. Have a great time at the Olympic Games. And uh, thank you. Best of luck, and thank you so much for doing this. You're welcome. Everybody, Bye -bye. Can thanks. Say thank thanks you for Gabby. coming, everyone. Bye, Gabby. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gabby. Bye. Bye. It's nice to meet you. Bye. Enjoy Bye. Your, Bye. Of your time Bye. of your games. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.